King Psalm 121 here with another video. And today we're going to be looking at some hopper clocks, timers, that kind of thing. And, you know, I discussed this a little bit at the end of my Rube Goldberg video. If you guys haven't seen that, you should definitely go check it out. But I discussed this a little bit, so I thought I'd make a tutorial on it. So today I'm going to be showing you guys two timers that I've made. This is the one I used in my Rube Goldberg machine. One was made by Etho, this one right here. And this one is pretty much the same as the Etho's, just a tad bit modified. So, we'll start with the one that I used in my Rube Goldberg machine. Now, I quite like this one. It's pretty simple, and so, here we have our output. You can see it's turned off right now. But if we go ahead and flick this lever, it's going to turn on a clock. And you'll see this will start to pulse. And now, what this can do is you can just, you know, use this to turn a lever into a pulse, into a timer. Um, and I used it for a firework display, so you could do that as well. Just have a dispenser here with fireworks and they'll pop up. So this is good for a controllable clock where if you want to turn it off, you can just turn it off like that. Now the downside is you'll see if I put in, let's say a whole stack of these, You'll see it's not going to change the amount of time any. It's still going to be the same amount of time. Um, so, it's not like Ethos design, which you guys have probably seen before, where you can, uh, you know, change the amount of time that you would like, but I quite like it. So here we have my second design, which this is very similar to the first one, just a bit of a different input. So we just have a daylight sensor input, and so if we just go just like this, you'll see. So go ahead and start pulsing. And then if I just go right back to daytime, it'll stop. Now if you want this to be the other way around where it pulses in daytime, you're just gonna have to invert the signal and just go like that. So guys, I'm going to take a little break here, and I'll be right back with the tutorials of how to build these two things. So give me one sec, guys, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, we are back. And so inside this chest right here is everything you're going to need for this tutorial. So we're going to need a daylight sensor or a lever, whichever you'd like to use as your input. I mean, it doesn't have to be either of these, but I mean, you could use a button into a T flip flop, but it has to be a sustained source. So you can use either of these. I'm just going to be using a lever, two building blocks, doesn't matter what they are, two redstone, one comparator, two hoppers, two redstone repeaters, two redstone torches, and something to output into, okay? So we're gonna start with our lever here. And you know, this is gonna be pretty compact. Um, you could make it a bit compacter, but this is what I like to do. We're gonna go put redstone here, a repeater, block right there, redstone torch, and then put a block on top and make a hopper going into that block and then go ahead on the other side and put a hopper going into there so these hoppers are facing into each other okay now i'm going to put another block there comparator there now i like to use a redstone repeater here just because this is only going to send out a one signal because there's only going to be one block in here so for this amount of compactness, if you would like to, you could, in fact, use just redstone. But if it's going to be any longer than this, for example, if you want it to be two redstone long, you're going to need to use your repeater. So I like to use your repeater just because we're going to put our redstone torch right there just to change the output because right now it'll be on but as soon as we put this put a block in there you're gonna see this is gonna turn off which that's what we want we want it to be off until we are ready to turn it on if you just want it to be on all the time and then start pulsing off 
you're just gonna have to remove that redstone torch and just place redstone right there. And that uh, you'll have. But I think this way is probably better. And then you're just gonna go ahead and flick that and you'll see it'll start pulsing. Now like I said earlier on, if you want to, you can just throw in a daylight sensor right there. Have the same effect. And if you want to switch it up so that the daylight sensor Let's say you want it to start pulsing only at night. The way to do that is simply to go ahead and invert your output, just like that. And that way you'll see if we go and set the time to night, you'll see that it'll start pulsing now and it'll turn off in the daytime. So that's how to do that, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and head back over and I'll show you Ethos two ways of, um, you know, his two hopper clocks. Now the one I made, I mean, it's works on the same exact principles, it's just got a little bit different dimensions so that uh, if you want to fit it in a certain place that, you know, Ethos isn't going to really work for you, you can use this one with slightly different dimensions. But the principles are exactly the same, so I'm gonna go ahead and head and head and head. Okay, guys, we are back, and what you see in front of me is a hopper clock slash timer made by Etho. All credit goes to him. I'm just showing this to you guys so you can, you know, get a little extra knowledge in case you haven't seen this before. So this does a similar job to me, is that it'll when you put items in here it will pulse this but the cool thing about this that really separates it from what i did previously over there is that the amount of time between the pulses is affected by how many items you put in so each item is roughly a second so if i wanted to make let's say five seconds between each pulse i'll just go ahead and put five items in there and you'll see every five seconds it's going to pulse and turn on my output now one thing that I like to add to Ethos design that a lot of people don't do is this off switch over here. So if I just click this, you'll see, give it a second and it will turn off so that it stops pulsing because what's happening is this is just powering this piston and this piston is going to shoot out whether there's items in this hopper or not. And it's also locking this one so that the items don't keep flowing between the two hoppers, but so this just makes it so that the clock is permanently uh, off excuse me and if you wanted to make it permanently on you would just have to put this little mechanism right here on the other side and then you'd just be turning it permanently on same idea but i will be showing you guys a tutorial on how to make this but like i said all credit goes to ethel on this one now this one is pretty much the same exact concept or slightly modified in the dimensions of it so you can see it's a little bit different built. It's two high and one wide instead of this one, which is one high and two wide. So uh, it's the same principles apply to it. Dimensions are just a little bit different. So you can see same thing if we put in five items, you can see it'll start to, start to pulse just like that one. So it's the same idea, just if you have a little bit different circumstances of where you're trying to fit this thing in, this one might be better for you compared to this one. But I'm going to go ahead and get all my stuff ready, and I will show you guys how to build both of these. So I will be right back. Okay guys, we are back, and everything we're going to need for this tutorial is in these two chests right here, okay? so. In order to build either of these designs, here's what we're going to need. It's the exact same for both of them. We're going to need two building blocks, two comparators, two hoppers, two sticky pistons, three redstone, an output of some sort. I'm going to be using a redstone lamp, one block of redstone, and then some blocks to put into the machine to get it started up. Okay, now to start it off, we're going to go ahead and get our hoppers going. two hoppers facing into each other then we're going to put a comparator output a block 
piece of redstone there and then a sticky piston coming out. So what's going to happen is whenever an item goes into this hopper, this comparator will be powered, turning on, you know, powering this block, turning on this redstone, which will extend the piston. Now we're just going to repeat the same exact thing on the other side. So comparator, block, redstone, and then your piston. Now, final thing is you're just going to need to put a block of redstone right there, and you are done. All you need to do now is place some blocks in here. You place just two blocks, and there you go. There you have it. You can see it'll pulse, and we'll just put our output right out of here. And now we have our pulsing clock there. So now we'll go ahead and build the other design that I showed you. Like I said, based on the same principles, just a little bit different. So once again, we're going to start off with the hoppers, point them into each other. The beginning is going to be pretty much exactly the same. You know, have a comparator running into a block. Same on both sides. Now the one difference is um, instead of putting your redstone here, you're just going to put your redstone on top of the blocks. And then put your sticky piston right there. And there, throw on your redstone block, and take an output out from right there. Put in some blocks to get started up, and there we go, we have our clock. So, you know, let's go ahead and put all this stuff away. Now, in order to make the mechanism that I showed you to turn off the machine, we're just going to need a lever. Uh, one redstone repeater and two redstone. So if I want to turn off the machine when I click this lever, what I want to do is I want to put it on the side of the output. So you can see the output is on the side of this right hopper, even with this right hopper. So I'm going to want to go repeater, redstone, redstone. I mean, this can be as long or as short as you'd like, but in the design I showed, I just had two redstone. Then your lever. Okay, now let's say I would like it to be turned on permanently. You're going to do the exact opposite as you would expect. You're going to go on the side that does not have the output. So we'll do it on this one. So output is on this side. Go on over to this side. Repeater, redstone, redstone, lever. And you can see when I click that, it'll be turned on permanently. Same idea. Just exactly the opposite and then it'll go back to pulsing when I unclick that. So guys, I hope you liked this um, you know, tutorial. I guess it's a dual tutorial on some hopper timers and clocks that I have a few that I've created, a few that were made by Etho. This one right here is made by Etho. This one pretty much Etho's design, just a little bit of a twist on it. Uh, the first two were made by me. And um, I hope you guys like this. Hope you learned something from it. And, you know, hopefully this will help you make some good redstone build yourself. I really think that these hopper clocks and timers are quite cool and quite useful in larger redstone builds where you want to take, you know, an everlasting lever pulse and turn that into a clock. But anyways, guys, it's going to be all for today. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe this has been king solomon 121 and i will see you next time